The organizers of the Wellington Sevens are hoping the two-day tournament will be a sold-out event this year. Previously, tickets were sold out within minutes of going on sale. But as Irfan Khan reports from Wellington, that's not the case this time round. All preparations falling into place just four days to the Wellington Sevens. We're all ready, weather's turned on, Fiji's here and that was our, um, you know, one of the things that we really wanted to see, um, but everything's fine. Organizers working over time for what they're saying is the biggest ever edition of the tournament since it began in 2000. Just like the place, they're also keeping up their energy levels. The overall thing that we've improved is the fan enhancement, so there's lots of fan engagement this year. Lots of good acts, lots of entertainment, Tiki is coming down and more importantly we've just nominated our first ambassador for the Sevens, Jonah Lomu. And for the first time in many years tickets are still available but hopes are high for a record crowd over the two days this weekend. Tickets are just available so we're down to our last 1700 plus and um, over the weekend there was a real big pickup. so um, the last couple of days tickets are still available but they're going fast. The tournament atmosphere with all the costumes and colours will also be the main draw card. And the whole city dresses up for it, um, everywhere you go they all talk about Sevens, the whole city gets behind it. it. It's truly a Sevens capital. With host New Zealand facing Fiji on the opening day, organisers are expecting fireworks. I think you have to look at those first four games, they're really big games and the fact that the first game New Zealand plays is their dreaded, you know, it's the, it's the Fiji New Zealand clash. Um, and, you know, everybody will be there on the edge of the seats trying to watch and see who wins that game. And changes have also been made to this year's tournament, with the parade taking place on Wednesday than the usual Thursday. Irfan Khan in Wellington for Fiji One News. And fans caught early flights to Wellington from Fiji to get conditioned and have a feel of the atmosphere before the tournament gets underway. They're all backing Fiji to win the tournament. This is my seventh year of travelling to Wellington to watch Fiji uh, play in the sevens. And then uh, last year it was uh, a bad result. Hopefully this year they will come back with a trophy. And then Fiji playing New Zealand in the first game, that's awesome. I wish uh, Ben Ryan and the Fiji team the very best you know, this weekend for the Wellington sevens. The fans mingled around in flights as they will be in the same cheering squad at the Westpac Trust Stadium for the two-day tournament starting Friday. The sevens is always be anyone's game. Fiji is the best at the moment now. We're going to have a good time for Fiji. Well, I came in uh, last year and I decided to come back this year to watch the sevens. And I'm behind the Fiji team and I'm wishing all the boys the, all the best. And uh, for sure we'll be taking back the Wellington Cup to Fiji. Europe's Six Nations Rugby Championship has started with a major upset. The pre-tournament favourites England have been stunned by France in Paris. The French scoring a remarkable last gap win at 26 to 24. Last year's wooden spooners have all of a sudden turned into flash French cutlery. And what a finish. A 19-year-old sub is the new hero of Paris. Gail Ficou fooled everyone on his way to the try line. Earlier, France and new first five, Jules Plisson, bamboozled England after just three phases. A dream bounce for Houget and France became a repeat nightmare for the English defence minutes later. The English back three got caught out by the bounce again before number eight Billy Vunapola helped bounce them back. Debutant centre Luther Burrell gave England the lead, which eventually stretched out to five points before French pressure and use of their bench proved crucial for a stunning finish and rare victory 26-24. Defending Six Nations champions, Wales started their campaign off in Cardiff. And the signs were promising with two first half tries. And Roberts is through this time. He's got support outside for Williams. And Williams will score for Wales. 
up 17-3, it looked like another trouncing for the Italians. But Wales struggled to finish them off. It's got to be a try and it's got to give Italy hope as Campagnaro again. Warren Gatlin's men holding on just 23-15. The Welsh will need big improvements if they are to win an historic third title in a row. Manchester United's big signing couldn't prevent the defending Premier League champions slumping to another humiliating loss. The one-time footballing powerhouse has been beaten by Stoke City for the first time in 30 years. A new look lineup with formidable striking power. Juan Mata, Robin Van Persie and Wayne Rooney all in Manchester United starting 11 for the first time. Still, you couldn't wipe the haunting anxiety from David Moyes' face. Fair enough, given in Stoke's howling winds, his nightmare continued. Fortune favouring Charlie Adam, not so much the rather gormless Michael Carrick. And when starting defender Phil Jones had to be stretched off after a hard fall, United had little choice but to opt for all-out attack. Van Persie on his favourite side! But even a typically neat Van Persie finish could only stop Stoke in its tracks for five minutes. The 28-year-old with the double to consign United to their eighth Premier League defeat. They're now wallowing in seventh, six points out of Champions League contention. Hovering just above them, Tottenham, after being held to a one-all draw against Hull City. The home side opening the scoring through debutant Shane Long before Spurs struck back. A quite sensational finish from Paulinho. Equally sensational, if for different reasons, a red card to West Ham's Andy Carroll for the swinging arm at Swansea's Chico Flores. Carroll clearly indicating it wasn't intentional and that Chico Flores was rather overreacting. Based on the replays, you'd be hard-pressed to disagree. The end result still going West Ham's way, though, 2-0. Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain's double helped Arsenal back to the top of the Barclays Premier League with a 2-0 win over Crystal Palace. But the lead may change again when Manchester City takes on Chelsea today. Everton is the only other climber in the top eight after beating Aston Villa 2-1. Manchester United is at 7th, 15 points behind first place Arsenal. And with the Pacific Games just around the corner next year July, Athletics Fiji have welcomed the return of two elite athletes from the U.S. It's been almost five years since Eugene Volmer and Milika Tuivanuovo left our shores as fresh high school star athletes. They've returned with so much more to offer. Home at last and straight away giving back to the sport he loves. Usually in my spare time, Saturday is the only spare time I have and I get to work with some triple jump, just helping them out. Volmer's been away for four and a half years on study scholarship, where he also competed. He left as Amari's brother's schoolboy and has returned more matured as a graduate. I'm working at uh, British American Tobacco, uh, marketing intern, and uh, enjoying it there so far. Also back from Fresno Pacific University in California is Volmer's training partner Milika Toivonovo. Yes, I've graduated with a degree in kinesiology with a focus on exercise science. I'm going back into school studying in uh, FNU, College of Medicine for um, physiotherapy. The intense competition in the U.S. paying its price with a Yetzin star athlete giving up the hammer throw due to an arm injury. I'm still injured, so I don't think there's a chance I'm going to throw again, but uh, yeah give uh, others a chance to step in for that. That hasn't stopped her from her field events, all gold medal contenders next year at the Pacific Games in Papua New Guinea. Training full time right now, so yeah, next year is a big goal. Definitely, definitely. What are you aiming for that side? Uh, going for gold. So fired up and on track to the Pacific Games, which is just 18 months away. William Tambuya, Fijiwa News. Former Lely Memorial School student Alisi Taka has been named MVP or Most Valuable Player by the USA netball team. The 24-year-old, also a senior airman with the US Air Force, was impressive in the six-country competition held last month. The US team played Ireland, Singapore, Uganda, Papua New Guinea and Sri Lanka. Taka, who will mark five years of Air Force service in April, has been assigned to Kiesla for four years. And England's tour of Australia finished in yet another abject defeat as Australia sealed a 3-0 2020 series whitewash
with a crushing 84-run win in Sydney. Australia skipper George Bailey smashed three sixes in his 49 off 20 balls, taking 26 off the final over from Jade Dernbach, as his team posted 195-6. At all, all that is his one zone. He swats it down the ground, mid-offs up, and it goes to six. The slow ball's out, and it's in the slot, and it's over the rope. Owen Morgan hit two sixes in his 34, but the next highest was 14, as England were all out for 111 in the 18th over. And now he's picked out the man at deep mid-wicket, and they don't drop those. The pain is over for Joe Root. We sure learned our lesson there, and we learned it from Mr Tucker too. Yeah, and I think the Gabba taught us that as well in the ADI. But you're right, 30 and over seems... Seems unlikely. Their tour record against Australia finished, played 13, lost 12 and won 1. And, uh, it has been an outstanding effort by the Australians right through the summer. And today the Seattle Seahawks crushed the favourites Peyton Manning and the Denver Broncos in Super Bowl of 48. It's the game that stops a nation for as long as four hours. Just like our Sukuna Bowl, it has the same, if not much more, grip in the United States. It's the unofficial holiday in the States, right here in Fiji. Um, most people enjoy the event by going to their friends' houses, having big Super Bowl parties like this, which is why we wanted to host this event. The U.S. Embassy taking the day off for NFL's Super Bowl. We watched some of the Super Bowl last year in Sabu Sabu when the Ravens won out of Baltimore and we took the embassy on the road up there. Gives people a chance to ask questions the same way you all have managed to teach me rugby. A giant tent outside, hot dogs and a big screen out and inside, putting everyone right into the MetLife Stadium in New York. It's always sold out of course and I think it's legendary the cost of the tickets upward of a couple thousand dollars the cost of the commercials it's amazing at several million per minute and that's because the audience is just huge. Crook quietly content with his underdog side blowing away the favorites. Yeah I mean it's great it's 22-0 right now with the Seahawks my football team versus the Broncos so I'm really happy the Seahawks are up and it's great to have this party with all our friends and family members from throughout the community. It stayed that way as the visiting Seahawks came back even stronger after the halftime, which Bruno Mars lit up. See the big screen that is behind me, leading 22 nil at halftime, the Seahawks have just managed another touchdown. The favorites getting cold feet as this was the first Super Bowl played outdoors in a cold weather city. Seven different receivers in that The Broncos and Peyton Manning, but they're getting beat terribly. It's 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 painful to watch. First half was uh, very exciting. Uh, surprise underdog performance by Seattle, uh, taking uh, taking the lead and shutting out the the Broncos, which uh, was a favorite team. Seahawks destroying Manning and the Broncos 43-8 to claim Super Bowl 48. William Tabuya, Fiji One News. Meanwhile, the Fiji Sevens team went through a tough training session today in the Lion's Den beside the Wellington Zoo. With just three days remaining for the start of the Wellington Sevens, the side worked on tackling and defence under the watchful eyes of coach Ben Ryan. The Fiji Sevens team looked focused in today's training run at Melrose Park beside the Wellington Zoo. They know pressure is on them to perform and win this weekend. I think um, the boys probably feel it all the time. I mean. And I'm sure they've seen uh, social websites like Facebook and stuff and, and I'm sure they would have had some negative comments because the expectation is so high in Fiji. So they'll definitely be feeling it, no doubt about it. I mean, I, I can't think of a nation that puts more pressure on their players than Fiji. This was the site's only training run this afternoon, having a rest day yesterday. Priority for coach Ben Ryan is whipping the boys back into shape and get the techniques right. Pretty satisfied, you know, lots of um, basics that we're doing really at the moment. Um, but no, the boys are in good spirits and uh, looking forward to the weekend. Every time players made mistake in training when not spared. I'm very happy about the training run today because um, most of the boys they 
they are aware of what is going on. Tackling is one area where coach Ben Ryan was putting more focus. Yeah, just today's session was mainly focused on defence, but we, we varied it really um, over the last few weeks. Um, I just felt that, uh, you know, a good time of the, uh, of the week to practice our defensive um, strategies and techniques, uh, knowing that we can try that against Wales tomorrow in Scrag. The heat was the factor, though cool wind slept across. Ryan happy to date with the response from his troop to his training style. I mean, lots of different things, I suppose, all the time for them, and new things for me as well. But um, they've, they've applied themselves well, they're working hard, they're training really well. Because I made my debut here last year, and compared to last year, I was very nervous running in this ground. But uh, this year I'm looking forward to make a change and make a big impact for Fiji. He still needs to polish some weak areas. He knows what to do better from cup competition exit in Las Vegas a fortnight ago. Defensive stuff that we need to just be aware of as well, you know, and um, you know, not giving away trade secrets when we say we just got to be clever at decisions at breakdowns. Since arriving in Wellington last Thursday, Fiji 7's team has been leaving no stones unturned in their preparation in a hope to bounce back from a disappointing performance in Las Vegas. In Wellington, for Fiji 1 News with cameraman Monish Nand, I'm Irfan Khan. And that wraps up sports for tonight. Vili, I'm going to hand it back to you. Thanks, Drew. Stay with us. We have world news after the break.